nobody doesn't seem to know the origin of the Pastorios. We claim that it goes back, oh, 4,000 years, and that's a darn long time, isn't it? 4,000 years. And then there's another story, is that uh, in the year 1341, the majority of the men were away fighting, and some Danish king, or Danish fleet, supposed to have tried the land at Padstow, and the women went out and dressed up in this weird-looking thing, got it out on, out on Stepper Point, and uh, they thought that it was the satanic majesty himself, and they all got to their boats and fled, you see. That's one yarn. But what we claim that goes back further than that. This is Colonel Bates speaking, and I've carried it for 48 years, and the family, 120 years, I've heard my mother say, and the brothers will stand in front of me now, and as I follow, I follow all the family right through, and when I'm gone west, my sons will keep May Day up. Will keep May Day forever and ever. And I took that horse from the Golden Lion, 10 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening without a break. But I'm very sorry to say I can't do it now. But all the same, I got my sons here who follow their father's footsteps. Well, when we hear Dickie Prenter's drum, we sort of, well, we feel that we must be at the Golden Lion and follow the Arbyas, you see? It's uh, sort of something which built up inside of you and you don't feel content until you are with the, with the arse. And uh, not only that, that doesn't apply only to the, the uh, members of the party, it applies, I, I think, to the whole of the original Pasto families. Uh, in the fact that uh, rain or falling or whatever happens, we, we see them out here year after year, the same faces, and they almost got their own little place to stand. And then, well, you, you can't keep them away. Uh, uh, you know, with a double barrel gun, sort of, there they are. You, you know they're going to be there. It's sort of a, more or less a fixture on May Day morning. About 80 years ago, the people, there were a number of people in Padstow who thought that they knew best and they used every means possible to prevent the Arias coming out. Uh, they thought if they could only do it for one year, then it could be stopped altogether. Uh, you see, just at that time, it had, the Abiyas party had got somewhat disreputable. <laughs> Perhaps there was too much drunkenness. Uh, it had certainly got very rough. Uh, Perhaps there was different then from what it is now. There was this faithful men who were determined, despite all the threats and um, bribery and every uh, persuasion imaginable, they still persisted that they would come out, and they did. And I think we should be very grateful now for their faithfulness in having preserved for us this very ancient custom, which undoubtedly is one of the oldest of its kind in Great Britain. 11 o'clock is 11 o'clock, you see. And when it comes to 11 o'clock, they must go out. And Gran says they can have no more beer after 11 o'clock. What they had before, and well, we are officially open unofficially and officially open all day long. <laughs> well, that's, that's Cornish, you see. I, I let them have a pint before they go out, and then I let them have two when they come back. <laughs> Is that right, buddy? That's right. That's right. Officially and unofficially, we strike the hour of midnight, our Aussie choir, as we term them, 
start singing the night song. Unite and unite, and let us all unite, for summer is a come on today, and whither we are going, we will all unite in the merry morning of May. Then it's, I warn you young men, every one, for summer is a come on today, to go into the greenwood, fetch the May home in the merry morning of May. Now our next verse concerns our dear old landlady here, Mrs. Cooch. Rise up, Mrs. Cooch, I know you well and fine, for summer is a come on today. You have a shilling in your purse, I wish it was in mine, in the merry morning of May. And if you look out of the windows on May the 1st, you'll see Padstow outside of the golden man. And when I say Padstow, I mean Padstow. Padstow. Padstonian. Well, the 1st of May, when uh, 1st of May, sir, I come out. I come out. And off I go again and run, run right down for the street after the young ladies, you know. And I take them inside us, you see. Take them inside us. Oh, they really love it. I cut you down and all I got to do is just put my arms around them, but I got inside of it. I only just put my hand down, you know, around and around. And then they let it just for the take them and under the ribs, you see. And... Right, I don't want to keep them there one minute and I toss us up again and after someone else. And they are, and then the song go in the merry morning night. Welcome. I must say a word of thanks to our squire, Mr. John Prudhoe Broon, for supplying us with all this lovely greenery, which he does do every year from his plantation. So, all together, give three hearty cheers for Mac and the old horse. The horse! We are! see the Castleton uh, dance today for the first time. Yes. Uh, but I understand it, it's different now to, to, to what it used to be. Oh, yes. It, well, we used to all go round, you know, and we used to dance just like the, the we young people, you know. We used to dance like the children dance now. But we weren't dressed in white hands. We were just in our ordinary clothes, you see. And then they used to stand like a teach public house, you see. We didn't have anything to drink but the bandage, you see. And then they used to say, now then, take your partners, you know. And then we used to all dance round. Then they'd, they'd play one or two dances, and then they'd band and have a drink, and then we should go marching on, you know, and just follow them and dance to the gallant too, you see. Yeah. But this idea of the, of the Queen being a woman, that's a new thing, isn't it? Yes, only last year. Mm. Yes, it's, a, it's always been a, a van before, but she's a... Of course, she's a good rider. She has a horse mm. of her own. Just sing those, those, that little bit again. I love that. I love the rhyme. I haven't heard that before. Which though. one? The rhyme for the for the uh, for the dance. Uh, about Brady. Yes. I don't know, no, I don't know what there is in bread. An old cow's head and a piece of bread and a pudding baked in a lantern. If that had been wed as long as me, pudding had never been wanted. And then he could sing la 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 la. It originated, they always thought, by the Cornish miners coming up here and uh, starting, of course. These, uh, about the king and the oak tree and all the rest of it. Uh, they add that to it, you know. But the two, 
and the dancing is practically sane. The ringers, as a rule, they used to be about 16 of them, and they all always danced, the old ones and the young ones, and then the girls threw in behind, and they were like the procession, and did the Morris dance, from pub to pub. Well, they used to uh, go around and dance, you know, stuff and things. Well, when it uh, when it been like finished over, it used to they always used to take the garland flowers in the church, and there used to be men at the top of the steeple with a rope, and they, they had a pulley, and they pulled it up to the top. Well, then when when we done that, there wasn't a, a maypole dance. We used to go and have a dance in one of the hotels in one of the rooms. You're not near the you know they had a room uh, wasn't connected much with the public house, and go and have a dance there. But now. They have a dance in itself a crown. So, um, but see the people dance, that'll have been, oh, it'll be about 40 years now. Yes. I think it was introduced about 40 years ago, yes, the maypole dancing. Yes, yes, yes. And they dance it very nicely, you know. Mm. It's, very, it's a, really a better, a better finish off, you know, that, than, uh, than what it was in the olden days, I think. It's very nice to see the children tripping around in the market square, and they do it very nicely. Generations, generations, you know. Yes. We had a bit of fun with the with the vicar, he pulled it off, you know, one time and did him a lot of harm. Pulled it he would have it taken off the steeple, you know. He said he'd had a vision, so I don't know what I've ever it seems all right now, but he's going in a, two or three weeks now. It is a pity when old customs like that, you see, it upset the old people, you see. And it did like, it did a lot of harm to the church. A lot of people wouldn't go. There's one person, she'd always been interested in, in it. And uh, during the war, it would have um, it would have gone down. And uh, you see, if it once, if you don't have it every year, and you won't stay, you couldn't go through the streets again. Well, her husband, one year when the war was so very bad, all as all as was done, the lady and the the king and the queen walked through the village with the garland, and there was neither band nor anything, just to keep it, to keep it so as it, it could go on after years. Well, the crown is uh, the head of the garland. It's the bunch, the bouquet, and it fits exactly on the top, made of uh, garden flowers. And uh, it's built up of a stick about 15 inches long, and there's a bunch of oak on the top, and you put different colors of flowers so they blend. And when it's finished, it fits in the top. There's all in the, in, the, in, the, in the garland top, the beehive shape, and it fits in the top, and that's the finishing. They'd, about a fortnight before Whitson, they used to come in the elephant yard and dance and practice for, for the next fortnight, see, and dance every every night, and then right up to the Saturday night before Whitson. If it were wet, they dance in the tap room. The Saturday night before Whitson, they'd have a real beano. That's where they'd have plenty of dancing, 
and plenty of help makes the government come in with them. This young man that stood beside of me now, Brannan, was a man that would start collecting on the Saturday night, <laughs> preparing for a for Monday morning. Then we come Monday morning, see that's where we go to, come Monday morning, they'd start then at 8 o'clock at our place, half a pint of beer they'd have, no more, nothing whatsoever, and then put a bit in the box, ready for starting. So I used to put them a bit in as well and start them off. Come on, wake up, Mark. Hey, grab him up. Okay. Come down with the old horse buses. <coughs> and there was a crowd outside, bigger than what it is today, ever so much bigger. And they was always dancing and going on, and the tunes were, the dances was real. If they did wasn't it doing doing it real, the old people, the old dancers, which me part me grand me father in law was an old dancer and he said, Not doing it right, you know, Tom. No, come on my lads, pick them up, keep those ankies up in the air, and put some life in it, or you won't get anything at night. Six dancers and yourself, the cake bearer. Who else would there be now? And the fool. And the coat carrier. What's, what's the fool do then? Well, we dance with around. a bearer, dances around, keeps them all alive. See? The fool, a merry man is he, with ever ready wit, with his elastic limbs as nimble every bit. In comic hat and gossoon dress. And a horse's bladder strung to a short stout staff tied on with a leather thong. Bells on his shoulders, bells round his knees. They said he was the perfect fool, one and all agrees. His scouting hat he passes through, in and out the crowd. On every penny he does get, I'm sure he's mighty proud. If he tires them with his chatter patter, the money helps the box to fill, so what matter? All the children laugh and clap at his tricks as acrobat. But if they don't precaution take, they taste his blood and not the cake. Our dancers six, all well-trained men must be, picked from the village, best you see. With legs as straight as a poplar tree, they clap all together and bend the knee. In well-trimmed bowler hats, ribbons broad and bright, white pocket anarchists, all dressed in white. Power fiddler too, let me tell you, the old tunes he knows quite well, and plays them on his old old fiddle without each.
Robin Hood was the king of the forest. He's the king, he's a free man that day, supposed to be by door, like um, years ago. He, he is the jester, like, and he passes all these jokes and all this. And if people will follow it, I wish I'd have been educated, as I could do it, explain more than what I really can do now. But it's what they call the um, rutting season, September, of this the reindeers. If you was to walk in, say, Baggett's Park, September, this month, your life wouldn't be worth living for, would it, amongst the reindeers. In my mind, it seems to follow this uh, dance through. It seems as if they used to dress up in the skins of the animals on this month to take advantage of, of their original state of living with these uh, reindeers and that. I think they tried to imitate sort of thing. That's my mind. Of course, it may be wrong, but I don't think it is. If I was educated, I study science, I study nature. But to follow the nature through, I walk many miles. And I walk all around Bagot's Park and I see these things happen. I see the stag, the big one, standing bold and brave as much as to say, come any farther, sort of thing, you know. And it's nature come true for me to dance this uh, day on this date, that it's the breeding season of the tears and all that. They can't take it off my mind, or I don't care how, how much educated it is. I still have my um, ideal of life and nature. And you can't beat nature. No one on this earth can beat nature. My dad, my only father, never mind about my granddad and my great granddad, they used to have three days of it while I've been a boy. And we used to dance uh, the round we go today. We used to dance that on the Monday, right round Bliffy Hall and all round Admerson that way. On the second day, on the Tuesday, we used to go all cross. Yoxall, and round from Amstel River and way home. The third day, we used to go the Burton way to Neewood Forest and Nuber and all that way. But I can't believe that the people are talking now about, younger than me, that it's never been out of any, but I say as, and no one will ever tell me otherwise. It's a, a thing that they dance for the poor and the needy those days and it got to be a not a, a dance for the poor of the village but a dance in history just to bring the history of the village back not for the poor of the village but for the men that was doing it to upkeep the horns and the clothing pay their expenses i do it today i don't do it for nothing i've got to pay the lads that are with me, the men that are with me, I've got to pay them their wages. If I fail to collect the same, I'm losing, we're all losing a day's wages to do it. If I fail to pay them lads, they wouldn't come in.
strike a light, for in this house tonight there's going to be a dreadful fight between King George and Black Prince, and we all hope King George will win, but whether he may win, lose, stand, fight or fall, he'll do his best to please you all. If you don't believe these words I say, step in King George and clear the way. In comes I, King George, the champion bold, I won ten thousand pound in gold. Twas I who fought the fiery dragon and brought him to the slaughter. And by these means I won the king of Egypt's daughter. I travelled the whole world round and round, but not a man of my equal have I found. If you don't believe these words I say, step in, Black Prince, and clear the way. In comes I, Black Prince of Paradise, born of high renown. This night I've come to take King George's life and courage down. If that be he that standeth there, that slew my master, son and heir, if that be he of royal blood, I'll make it flow like Noah's flood. Mind what thou sayest. What I say I mean. Stand back, thou black Morocco dog, or by my sword thou die. I'll pierce thy body full of holes and make thy buttons fly. How canst thou pierce my body full of holes and make my buttons fly? When my body is made of iron, my head and sword of steel, my fingers and toes are double jointed, I'll challenge thee to yield. Prepare. He challenged me to fight. Better to fight than to die. Five pound for a doctor, ten for a quack. If you don't believe these words I say, step in, quack doctor, and well, clear the way. We'll finish one. The stolen job's been going on ever since I can remember. I've been mixed up with them from, well, actually taking part for the for two years. My grandfather did it. My father did it. My uncles have done it. And. It, I've seen in an old book where my great great grandfather actually drunk his souling cap, which was the last one that saw him off. That was the last a pint of gin and rum. And he could go on talking forever about this, but there's a lot of people who can't understand it because it's really our religion. We believe in souling, we believe in ghosts because we're supposed to be ghosts. Sometimes there's not many of us are real tenders at church because I think our belief is more sentimental and private and we all turn out on All Hallows Eve. There's a younger gang in Antibus, the younger generation, and we were, there's one or two of the old ones that's packed up, in fact they've died, so to say, and we thought we'd better have another gang going to keep the tradition going. So we started this youth club. The, two, the boys that was at the youth club then, which are grown up men now, and uh, they're in the senior gang. Well, my name is Mr. Collins, uh, Reg Reginald Collins. Uh, I'm a farmer's son, and uh, I've been in the soul caking for about five years. As Mr. Isherwood has just told you, I was one of the younger generation, as he calls it. We started through the youth club. Of course, we had to go to the old gang to for a bit of help. They 
gave us quite a lot of clothes for the job and quite a lot of information. Anyway, my part is I, I'm the horse driver and I come in with the horse at the end of the play and, uh, and this horse, it is uh, a real horse's skull with just one leg attached to it and uh, it is believed to be over a hundred years old. And uh, at one time, there used to be quite a lot of gangs. There used to be a gang for each village, a gang of soul takers. And the, the horse's head used to be the main thing. If they had no horse's head, they couldn't turn out. And they used to, if they used to meet, they used to fight and smash one another's horse's heads up so, that, so as to stop the other gang going out. He's come to see thee once again. He was once alive, but now he's dead. He's never put a poor old horse, he said. So stand round with him and show yourself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just look around. Dad's never seen a finer horse on England's ground. He's double ribbed, sand footed, and a splendid horse in any gears. But by gum, riding his left hand. Whoa, whoa, Dick, whoa, that's whoa. But as you see, Dick's getting old. So we put this old bag on him to keep him from the cold. He's gotten more wrinkles in his forehead than there are for us in an acre of fresh blue ground. But he's still good, strong and sound. Whoa, that whoa. He's getting an eye like a hawk, a neck like a swan, a pair of ears like a lady's pocket book, so read them if they can. Every time he opens his mouth, his head's a pop. Every tooth in his head stands rink, jink and jank like a regiment of pickled onion. If the looks down his mouth, he'll see the dirty heels of his socks. Now, he's a very fine horse. He's very well bred. On answerable sorts, this horse has been fed. He's won Derby and the Oaks and finished up pulling the nail milk float. So stand around, the can show yourself. Look at go, go, go. He's travelled high. He's travelled low. He's travelled through both frost and snow. He's travelled in the land of Icky Picky. Where there's neither land nor city, where houses attached with pancakes, walls built with dumplings, streets paved with penny loaves, black puddings grow on apple trees and the plucks them as they want some, little pigs run about with knives and forks sticking in the back, crying, I do like me. I said one and my horse another, so stand around, you can show the time. Whoa, 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 lad, whoa. Now, this horse was born on Antibus Smoss. Well, as you all know, the crows fly, tail fox. And just before he was found, he shot his mother to save the beans round. Now he was fed neat and day with a spoon, and at one time he could dance to any old tune. Up, lad, whoa. But now as the seas, Dick has only one leg. And with that leg, he's supposed to beg. And what he begs, it is but small, but that's obliged to serve us all. So now, all you kind ladies and gentlemen, I ask you all to open your hearts. We're collecting for Dick a new spring cart. Not one for him to draw, oh no, but one for him to ride in. And if they doesn't believe these words I say, ask these other chaps, they're bigger liars than me. And not so much. And now, Dick, show the obedience to the best friend. And now to the wasp. Pains within and pains without. Heal the sick, 
the blind, the lame, and bring the dead to life again. Can you cure this man? I can. Take hold of this bottle of whiff waff while I feel his pulse. His heart beats 15 times to the tick of my watch once. I must give him a drop out of this old bottle, down his old throttle, and one of my simple pimple pills. That'll cure him. This man's not dead, he's in a trance. Rise up, Jack, and let's all dance. <laughs> Incline for listing. Time away will swiftly pass. You shall have all kinds of liquor. Likewise, kiss some bonny lass. Ten bright guineas will be your bounty, if along with me you go, and your hats will be well trimmed with ribbons. You will cut a gallant show. Now, my lad, are you free, able and willing, to serve the king and take this shilling? Thanks, kind sergeant, for your offer. Time away will swiftly pass. Dash my wugger, I'll grieve no longer for the proud and saucy lass. Now, since my lover listed and joined the volunteers, I don't mean to sigh for him or yet to shed a tear. I just mean to let him know I'll get another sweetheart and along with him we'll go. Now, I'm a foreign traveler. I travel our land and sea. But all I want is an handsome wife to bear me company. Now, if I could win her love, and I could gain her vow. I'd sit no more content while others follow the plow. Now, dear, I was going to give him a bit of a strump. Yes, I think so. But I'm a bit hoarse. Oh, yes, yes Dee Well, we'll try one. Sure. I used to court a charming girl, the fairest in the land. Her name was Sally Tompkins, I'll never to understand. I love that pretty girl of mine, she had a whining way. Oh, squeeze her oh, away, man, so me, and then told me she was saying. Yo, no, we're only courting, I'm sure you can forget. You cannot claim me as your own, we are not married yet. If you really love me, then don't make love so free. But do give all that tickly and tormenting me. I uh, took my lover for a walk, as most lovers do. And as we toddled side by side, I begged that she'd be true. Oh, when we came beneath the shade of an overhanging tree, I put my arm around her neck, and then she says to me, You're no, we're only courting, you cannot, show sure you can't. You cannot claim me as your own, we are not married yet. If you really love me, then don't make love so free. But do give over to me and torment me. Madam, I have gold and silver. Madam, I have house and land. Madam, I have rings and jewels. All for you, at your command. What care I for your houses and land? What care I for your rings and jewels? All I want is a handsome man. A handsome man will not maintain you. Beauty, it will fade away. Like a rose that blooms in summer and in winter will decay. There you are, Tommy. Long I have sought thee. Now I have caught thee. Here, Tommy, take thy child. The bairn, Jen, the bairn, Jen. Why, it's not a bit like me. Oh, yes, it is. Look at its eyes, nose and chin. Why, it's more like you than ever. It's got your grin. It's not mine, it's not mine. Take it to the overseers. And now our play is ended, we'll make it now our business to follow him along. We're not the London actors, as I have told you before. We've done the very best we can, and best can do no more. So, good mistress and good master, as you sit by the fire, remember us poor plough lads who plough the muck and mire, for the muck it is so nasty, the mire it is so strong. So remember us poor plough lads as we go trudging on. <laughs>
kettles. You, do, you don't know what a kettle is, do you? It's a kind of a, a cloth coat. And they stitched on these kettles long pieces of newspaper or wallpaper or anything. They cut them about so wide and so long, and they stitched them on. They were all hanging down on the sleeves and all over, the, uh, all the uh, men folks. And then old Tosspots had an old overcoat on with a rope tied round the back, and a big hump stuck up here, you see. And uh, its face was black. Well, they all had black faces, every one of them. And uh, Molly Brown Baggs was a, well, she was a regular old ragamuffin look sort of, sort of a body. And when she, when they said, and the next that comes on is old Molly Brown Baggs, she had a, a potato masher in her hand and she, she banged away at the old man's hump, you see, all the way around. <clears throat> That's uh, how they were dressed. Well, they used to get quite a lot of eggs and bacon and all sorts of things they got given. Oh, yes, I went round with them. And the girls would go up one side of the dale and the boys the other side of the dale to all the farmhouses. And when we'd finished our pace second song, we would say, would you like a comic song? And then, of course, one or two of us would give them a comic song, you see, and they In liked comes that. I. That's never come yet. My lal head, my girt wit. If me wit be ever so small, me and me Pompey and we'll conquer them all. So the next that comes in is a draw spot, you see. He's a valiant old fellow in every degree. He's a hump on his back and he wears a big stare. And all his delight is in drinking all day. All the ray, all the ray, all the ray, all the ray, day. In comes I, old Molly Masket, under me arm I carry me basket. Into me pocket I pop me cash and thinks myself a jolly old lass. So the next that comes in is old Betsy from Box. Oh, come on, her money, she goes in old rags. She's plenty of money and plenty in store. She's come up a second and hopes to get more. All the red, all the red, all the red, glory day. In steps I, King George, King George it is my name. My sword and dagger by my side, I hope to win the game. The game, sir, the game, sir, it's not in all thy power. I'd cut the anod slicey in less than half an hour.